Hello, Toronto Global Forum. Catherine, that was a wonderful idea, by the way. I don't know where you are, but the uh, over 40 support for creative, we are more than happy to assist with. Um, before we get started, I want to acknowledge that the land we're meeting on in the community of Toronto is traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. It is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and many peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and I encourage each of us to continue on our journeys to learn about the history and ongoing stories of Indigenous peoples, where we live, and where we work. So how many people here are on TikTok? Raise your hands. How many people are on TikTok right now? <laughs> Not to sound hyperbolic, but what if I told you one day, everyone would be carrying around a screen that was connected to everyone and everything, everywhere, every day, all day long, and you, as an individual or as a marketer, had the ability to put yourself right in the middle of that experience. Let me take it a step further. What if I told you that TikTok is the culmination of 150 years of mass media? It has the depth of information as print, it has a sight, sound, motion, and scale of television. It has a mobility of radio. It has the interactivity of digital. It's full screen. It's sound on. It's the first screen. Actually, it's the only screen because you know when you're on TikTok, you can't really do anything else, right? And it is the most engaging platform on the planet. Now put your marketing cap on. If you were able to put yourself right in the middle of that experience, what would you do? What would you say? And what would you try to solve for? Again, I'm Joshua Bloom, GM of Global Business Solutions for TikTok Canada. And our team is focused every day on driving strong business impact for Canadian brands. It's a point of pride for us that there's such an incredible ecosystem of SMBs using TikTok, building customer bases and communities in Canada and around the entire planet. I'm very excited for you to meet some of them today. At TikTok, we work with tools that empower businesses to be creative and meaningfully engage with communities. So how do you reach, educate, inspire and build loyalty with your customers? And how can using TikTok uniquely position you as an entrepreneur to drive strong business impact, but also create meaningful, uh, meaningful conversations within a community? Well, it's really why we're here today. So whether you are street brew coffee, sharing a love of well-roasted, delicious coffee and contributing part of sales for every bag towards support for unhoused communities or your cheekbone beauty. Focus on positive impacts for indigenous youth and creating a space in the beauty industry where everyone, including indigenous people, feel represented and seen. Or maybe your grumpy kid's studio, spreading joy and offering limited edition releases of playful and absolutely gorgeous ceramic works. Or your indigenous box. And you're creating a gift box company that helps and very thoughtfully helps other indigenous businesses grow. SMBs can connect with more than 1 billion people around the world using TikTok every single month. And these audiences aren't just consuming content, they're contributing something new, co-creating, and being part of a conversation. Okay, I'm obviously very enthusiastic <laughs> about TikTok's power to entertain, build community, and help businesses thrive. But I'm now gonna transition over to Mallory Youngway, who's today's moderator and also co-founder 
and co-CEO of Indigenous Box. Thank you, everybody. Gakio, get the dumb scat the noal, Mallory Young, Wayne in Sigason, Peter Jackson, Egwa Teresa Anderson, Dinegeguak. Greetings, everyone. My name is Mallory. I come from the Satellite Cree Nation in Northeastern Alberta in Treaty 6 territory. I'm honored to be a guest here in this territory, and I'm honored to st share the stage with these incredible makers. In a moment, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their business. But first, I want to honor all of you. Thank you for taking time to, to join us today. Your presence here signifies not, not only your interest, but your commitment to the future. These creators here have spent years creating and telling their stories using platforms like TikTok. And as, as we've seen with the dynamism of platforms like TikTok, innovation takes many forms. Each contribution, no matter how small or how big, can lead to ripple effects. So help me in welcoming Jen, Caitlin, Ross, and Garbo. Each of you, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves a little bit. Tell us about your business. Tell us about what inspired you to start it. And Jen, we're going to start with you. Okay, so nice to meet everyone this afternoon. I'm Jen Harper. I'm the founder and CEO at Cheekbone Beauty Cosmetics. And we started out as digitally native, so direct to consumer. But now we are available in Sephora, Canada, in 60 locations across the country. And we're available in 609 JCPenney locations in the United States, as well as have a, a thriving e-commerce business. But the whole mission and purpose of our brand in, in the early days, and it still is that today, it's the reason why we exist, was this idea of representation. Um, we believe it can save lives. And so our mission and vision at Cheap Bone Beauty is to help every Indigenous person feel seen and valued while we're crafting sustainable color cosmetics that don't end up in a landfill and are made for every human being. And we do this authentically the three pillars of our brand are our indigenous roots my ojibwe or anishinaabe heritage um, we are sustainable by nature i believe uh, indigenous people are the ogs of sustainability we only make up five percent of the global population but are the communities that are protecting 80 percent of this world's biodiversity so you should start paying attention to us and asking us to those tables where environmental issues really matter and thirdly, we're bold, clean color. In this color, clean category, this space for so long, it's loaded with misinformation that doesn't marry with science. Um, and and also, it, it was missing color. I, we, we found it to be, as a brand, just uh, muted and plain. And so we wanted to show that, yes, nature is loaded with incredible hues, and you can bring that to the world with safe, clean cosmetics. And so that's what our brand stands for. And of course, 100% vegan and our mission is authentic um, sustainability, but done through this lens of being uh, completely transparent about this process. There's no silver bullet when it comes to sustainability, that this is a journey and nobody's going to get it perfect, but we're certainly going to try and blaze trails as our brand is doing that. Wonderful. <laughs> blaze trails. I love that. Caitlin, tell us a little bit about Street Brew Coffee. Hey, friends. My name's Caitlin. He's Ross. We're the father-daughter duo behind Street Brew Coffee. We're a social enterprise, uh, small craft coffee roastery here in the city of Toronto. And we also have a mobile coffee trailer that goes to different events in the GTA uh, and serves coffee. And our mission is to help empower those to get out of uh, homelessness who are currently experiencing homelessness. So we work with several homeless charities here in the city of Toronto. Uh, and I make videos just trying to show that coffee can be really fun. Mm -hmm. And Mallory, I think I'm here to provide the vintage perspective on TikTok. I'm, why am I here? Um, actually, I started Street Brew as a hobby. I retired, was bored, wanted to see if we could come up with some really great coffees. We found some villages that harvested coffee in Honduras, began to work with them, imported their coffee. And right about the time I was ready to take it to the public, Caitlin came back from university in the U.S., and we thought, why not? Let's see what happens. See if we loved our coffee. We knew it was good. We had uh, driven relatives and neighbors crazy while we were learning to make good coffee. But uh, we, re we realized we did have something special and we took it to the public. And um, 
did very well with it in the fall of 2019. Um, sold out at every show we took it to, the Royal Winter Fair, Sportsman Show, big events in Toronto like that. And then we had that little pandemic thing happen and uh, they kind of closed all of our shows off. And um, Caitlin came to me in February 2021 and asked if I had ever heard of TikTok. And I went, no, not exactly. And, and then that's how we got involved in TikTok. And it's really helped to define our business since then. Incredible. I think you don't, we, we don't have to preach to this choir. These are highly caffeinated professionals in the room. So <laughs> check out uh, Caitlin and Ross after this, uh, if you're interested in any corporate uh, coffee orders. Um, so Garbo, tell us about your business. Hi, my name is Garbo. I'm the hands and brains behind Grumpy Git Studio. We specialize in handmade grumpy ceramics. This is the only piece I could fit in my pocket. So our trademark is that little grumpy face. Everything is made in Montreal, where our studio is based from. And the whole business started as a pandemic hobby. I graduated three years ago in the height of the pandemic, and I was just looking to do something with my hands. My day job was in construction and architecture, so very different from ceramics I would say um, so yeah I became bigger and bigger I started from my parents living room and now we have a team of five in Montreal Wonderful. imagine having an architect design ceramics for you <laughs> and imagine getting to learn from an architect who's de designing and making ceramics right easily accessible on your mobile device so follow her and check out all of the amazing things that she's doing so I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. So all of your brands presumably speak to different communities, different people, different segments of, of, of the population. At Indigenous Box, our community is highly motivated, hungry people who are interested in change and mobilized to make a difference. That's our audience. Tell me a little bit about your audience. At, you know, how are they, what are they interested in? Sustainable uh, business practices, coffee, ceramics, those sort of things. So Garbo, let's start with you. What would you say are some of the defining characteristics of the community that you've built on your platform, on this platform? So we can look into the background information. We can go to analytics on our phone to find out who are the people that follows me. And the interesting thing about having an online business is that you don't really feel like your audience are real people. Um, I hosted my first ceramic workshop two weeks ago, and this is the first event that we have in person that's over 100 people. And then through that event, I actually saw those numbers in person. And those are pretty much like people like me, like 95% to 99% in some instance, female that are really interested in doing something more with their hands, doing something um, that's more creative, more hands-on. And they also want to support fellow local small business that are focusing on that. So it's a group of people that are really wholesome. I think that's the word to describe it. We had workshops that are mostly just all girls making pots together, chit-chatting, and then the whole atmosphere is just so healing. And some Something that I hear a lot from some of my audience is that they think some of our work, even though for us it's a job now, we make pots that adds a little grumpy face to add a little bit of a cuteness to everyday items. But for some of our audience, they said it heals their inner child because when you're using a coffee mug or a plate or a bowl, you don't really treat it with much, I guess, respect. You use it because it's your cabinet, you bought it from IKEA or HomeSense or wherever you shop from. But if you invest in a piece that you know someone that has put so much time in designing it and making it and especially has like a tiny grumpy face on it that makes no sense I think it brightens up your day a little bit so it's definitely people that want to elevate a little bit of their everyday rituals and pay more attention to the stuff that they're using and pay more attention to who is actually making the products and take care of it for a long time right if we invest in local businesses and and get high quality products we don't have to replace them as often i think jen can speak really well to this so jen how about you what are the characteristics that you've noticed like age or topics of conversation uh, around your audience yeah it's something our team takes really seriously is trying to figure out who likes our brand why they like our brand um, and of course, there's all of those analytics built into platform the platform of TikTok, so you can see who is watching it. And when we do get to do um, in-person in in events, it's really interesting to see who's there and who shows up. But we've really learned, like when I think of, you know, we've 
from the early days called ourselves a brand that was really like about a feeling like we wanted to make people feel something and so we've really honed in on this concept of who our customer is and it's certainly the human being that believes in social impact and we always talk about our products as incredible as they are for that for us it's really just this vessel to connect with these incredible human beings around the world that are passionate about um, social impact and, and seeing a difference in the world and then connecting with a community um, as, as ours, as Indigenous people that have just this incredible, beautiful culture that is um, just loaded with teachings that are valuable for not only their families and their communities, but also for our next generations. And so we're really seeing that that, that customer uh, is what we call, we call our community a cheekbone warrior. So we've named them that. Um, um, and it is this just incredible human that want, wants to see change in the world and that something, unfortunately, large business, I don't feel a certain way when I'm buying my, you know, home olive dish soap, right? And so I know um, when people buy our products, we, we, we get the feedback, whether it's through the direct messages or emails sent to us, that they just feel so much better purchasing from our brand because they know, you know, we're a B Corp certified company. And that means we give 2% of our revenues back to causes that are really important to us. So 1% is environmentally and the other percent goes to our Cheekbone Beauty Scholarship Fund, which we're really proud proud that, um, you know, to date, our brand has given back over $350,000 in, in cash and in-kind donations to support community. And for a small brand that, um, you know, has still much growing to do, I'm, I'm very proud of our team and the work we've done. And this group of cheekbone warriors that has really surrounded us to help continue to uplift the message and the impact that we're trying to make in the world. Impact first. Oh, my gosh. I am her audience. I'm going to stop just for a moment just to tell you a little story. So in, in March of 2021, I started Indigenous Box out of my basement. And just three months prior to that, I was thinking of ideas of how can I get out of doing this nine to five job that I don't super love, but also do something in a way that was, you know, brought people together. I saw Jen doing cheekbone beauty for years. I was in business school, studying supply chain, trying to figure out, you know, where, where do I fit? Where's my role? How can I contribute to society? And so Jen was out here being a warrior in this space and telling young Indigenous girls, people who look like me, that they also belong in this space. And so March of 2021, we launched Indigenous Box and I put my face right on the logo. <laughs> and, but she also represents so many young Indigenous girls who look like me and so she gets to travel out in the world and you know take care and and represent our people in such a good light and you know part of that was because of Jen being brave and taking up that space that s so many of us um, couldn't take that step forward yet um, Caitlin <laughs> sorry Presumably, your community is filled with lots of coffee lovers. There's a science behind coffee. It's incredible. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you brought your community together. Yeah, I think we're a little bit unique. We, we started as a, a small craft roastery selling bags at trade shows and, and small events until the pandemic hit and shut all that down. And then we transitioned online and became strictly e-commerce. And that's where we really saw a, a big boom was through TikTok uniting through people that just love coffee. I really didn't think there would be an audience of people that wanted to make me watch, watch me make coffee, but two and a half years later, apparently there is. So that, that was a big transition. And then through our growth on TikTok, we were able to launch a coffee trailer that actually goes out uh, in community. So we still have that e-commerce side of things, but we also have weekly pop-ups where our community gets to come and meet with us and we literally make them coffee and it's been fantastic um, to have that uniting place where people can come and so yeah they see me on a screen but then they can come meet me in person and actually try our coffee and that's been a game changer for bringing our community together. Yeah I think that um, coffee is such a personal experience. Um, there's all kinds of coffee companies out there that say they're the best they're wonderful. Um, that's marketing. 
buzzwords, but that trailer actually allows us to put a coffee in your hand. And then what we're waiting for is, oh my goodness, this is the best coffee I've ever had. And we get that all the time. So it validates our business principles and our value proposition in the market. And being consistent to that brand quality has actually led Caitlin into a career of creating content for major brands around the world that have nothing to do with coffee. And some do. Um, we now create uh, demonstration videos for high-end espresso equipment that's being launched into the market. Caitlin will do videos on how to maximize your pleasure and your experience on these espresso machines. So that, again, through TikTok is something we often joke and say that we we wish we could say we sat down in a boardroom and planned all this stuff out on a whiteboard, but we didn't. Um, we just started creating content for coffee lovers and it exploded. I mean, I, I can I, I can attest to that. So many corporations that we work with at Indigenous Box have said the same thing, that they're just making it up as they go. And because they love what they do, it comes out. And you saw this morning, uh, Nikolai Tangent, he was talking about authenticity being uh, so important in what you do. Obviously, we're not burnt out. We're passionate about what we're doing and we're going to keep driving it forward. So speaking of community, I, I want to know a little bit more about um, how your community impacts your strategy. So what content, um, what, what content have you found that keeps your community engaged? Garbo, we're going to um, jump over to you on this one. Um, yeah, sure. So the videos that you guys saw playing on the screen, those are content that people love to watch. It's I would say this is kind of like a golden formula that I've worked out. If you guys want to take notes, feel free. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stand right back. So the content idea is that you're making something for someone or for a purpose. People love to hear storytelling behind a product. And you kind of want to disguise it as not as a product, but something like a kind gesture you're doing for someone. So um, the video show before is I'm making a gigantic bowl for my husband who eats out of a pot. So relatable for a lot of people. And the next version of that that we came about is making a sandwich plate for my husband who wouldn't use a plate when he eats his sandwich. So it's also a problem that a lot of people can relate to. And that's what our audience loves. So from that same formula, you can make so many different things that relates back to your product. So let's say Halloween's coming up, you can say, oh, I'm making a Halloween version of our favorite mug. And this is the story. And this is why we use same colors or whatever patterns that we did. So in introducing a product back to the audience. And that's what people love to see is that you're not trying to constantly push out, oh, this is a new mug or this is a new app or this is a new product, but you're telling a story behind why you're doing that. So yeah, that's what our community loves. Many people in the room are trying to figure out how does TikTok, uh, how is it relevant to my business or how is it relevant to what we're doing at XYZ company? Well, this is it. People want to see the behind the scenes. They want to see the people behind the brands and understand the mission that you, you started with. So Caitlin, tell us a little bit about how your community uh, contributes to your uh, content strategy. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the things that's really been evident for us and has been beneficial is going live on TikTok, uh, giving people that real time inside peek into our business. Um, I go live pretty much every weekday morning and just brew coffee with people. And I get 20,000 people watching me brew coffee in the morning. It's crazy. Um, and then from that, I found that we have uh, really a global audience. 70% of my audience is actually in America. Um, so those are people that can't really come to the trailer very often, uh, but we started going live at our coffee trailer pop-ups and you know, people from all over the world are tuning in, just watching us serve coffee. So everything we kind of do at Street Brew now is focused on content and how we can show people a behind the scenes, bring them in. We had this, just this past week, we had people travel from New Jersey to come to our coffee trailer. We've had people from the UK, we've had people from Mexico, we've had people from Australia, literally travel to Toronto just to have a cup of coffee from our coffee trailer because we make these videos and we're building those human connections through the live stream. We take time to get to know them um, on all that kind of stuff. And two Christmases ago, we launched a whiskey coffee and um, we solely promoted it through TikTok. Uh, I posted a couple videos and, and people were like, when is this going to drop? When is this going to drop? So when it I was officially ready to go live, I went back and responded to every single comment on that video saying, okay, it's live now. Go get it. Limited edition. 
and we sold 150 bottles in less than a week just through TikTok because I took that time to go and engage with people personally and tell them that it was ready. It was like it was made for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think the reach is, is crazy. I mean, last Sunday we're here in town at Leslieville Farmer's Market. We're there every Sunday. And a young couple came up and it's kind of weird to watch and because they see Caitlin and they go speechless and they go, it, it's her. So then I engage with them and I say, you, you folks okay? Well, we're all the way from New Jersey. We came to get coffee from your trailer. And I went all the way from New Jersey and probably passed a few coffee shops on the way, right? Um, and they said, well, we were here to see Caitlin and Drake. And I said, okay, which one was, uh, <laughs> was it Caitlin or Drake? And they went, maybe Drake, but it was important to come and see Caitlin as well. So we interact with people, we have fun. Anytime somebody visits our trailer internationally, they're gifted with a bag of coffee to take home. Uh, we've had people from Liverpool, England, um, all over the world. It is really crazy, um, the reach that TikTok has. And it, from two and a half years ago, when we had no social media, presence really it just wasn't part of our strategy um it now defines almost everything we do and as i said earlier there's major brands we've worked for hotel brands um a lot of non-coffee brands who engage with caitlin to promote their product so that's incredible global reach right tiktok has the uh, the capacity to get your businesses out on a global reach I love that people like to go behind the scenes and to learn a little bit about how to brew coffee. Coffee, I think, brings people together in a way that, in a way that is just so magical, right? You learn over coffee, you make business decisions over coffee, you can't make business decisions unless you've had coffee. <laughs> but uh, Jen, tell me a little bit more about your community. What keeps them engaged? Yeah, like so many of the same, same things for sure. Um, we it's just so powerful what these tools can do for a small business. You know, when I think of what I now understand about the giant companies in terms of their marketing budgets, and I know what our marketing budget is, I'm like, how have we grown this way and done this? And it's only through the uh, the platform like like TikTok, where that is at no cost, but our time. But really, when I'm thinking and listening to this, like, we can't put a dollar value on this engagement that you're creating with real human beings that are learning about your brand. Like this didn't exist so many years ago. And so it's, it's an incredible tool that I think every business at every level could truly take advantage of in such an authentic way, because it's how you tell stories. And, you know, that is for us as Indigenous people, um, we love sharing stories. And a big way we do that is there's sort of three buckets. That's always like my marketing lingo, sorry, that we use in Cheap Bone Beauty, but that we use when we're building these strategies. And one is this educational aspect you saw the the video of Deanne Hupfield, who is um, an incredible powwow dancer and has the expertise now to teach people about powwows and etiquette. And for us as a brand, um, you know, my home community is in northwestern Ontario, almost on the border of Manitoba. And I remember going back to the powwow um, the one year when I had started Cheekbone and I said to my father, who is a man of very few words, um, like, why is, don't, don't any of the locals come to our community's powwows? And he, and he said, no, there was like one couple from Sioux Narrows and I guess they come every year, <laughs> but nobody else. And I'm like, well, what a shame, like what an incredible way for non-Indigenous people to truly connect with an Indigenous communities. And so as we were building Cheekbone and growing, teaching in, in about our culture and who we are and that non-Indigenous people are invited to our powwows and, and we want you there. And, and you know, we're, this is an economic forum in a sense that that helps our communities, economically speaking, you're, you're purchasing um, from the vendors that are at the powers and so forth. So there's so many ways. So there's this educational piece that we love to offer through TikTok. Then the, the get ready with me, which is just, this is the beauty space. And, you know, I'm, 
skewed closer to 50 and I'm the one that our team says gets the most engagement and I hate doing these videos on TikTok but you know do it for the team um I'm like who wants to watch a 40 or 7 year old woman put on eyeliner but apparently people do <laughs> but it's relatable and I think that's the key right and that's what I've learned to recognize that it's another woman like me who you know when we talk about our eyeliner that the quality is so epic there is zero pull especially for someone of my age who now has some more delicate skin around the eye area and of course you don't want the pull and that's why our eyeliner is incredible and we talk about the ingredients and and one thing as a brand that we've done that I'm so proud of is all the work we've done in, in innovation. And uh, we built our own cosmetics lab in St. Catharines, Ontario, where we're headquartered. We employ scientists and a chemist and we make our own formulations and we share part of that journey to, to a degree because obviously there's trade secrets involved there. But those are things that the audience absolutely loves. And then what touches my heart is I think when they've seen us grow, like I had on my vision board and that was on our socials in the early days that we would partner with Sephora and we are now in Sephora. So that is kind of a wild thing to happen. <laughs> and, and it's that business journey. They, they loved being behind the scenes at the business journey, uh, uh, on the business journey with us. It's not about the connection. It's not about the content. It's about the connections that we forge. And so Jen at Cheekbone Beauty does that so beautifully. Talk about really good business outcomes for small businesses on TikTok, right? At, at Indigenous Box, TikTok has helped us in so many ways. It helped us reach customers in Bogota, Colombia, or in Switzerland. We're shipping products and opening sales channels for Indigenous business. And, and I think that's why they brought me here today is because I, I talk a little bit about opening uh, sales channels, opening opportunity for people, small businesses, uh, Indigenous businesses, opening them up to diverse markets. How can you help these small businesses by ensuring that they are seen as major contributors, equal collaborators, and, and essential, essential partners in this. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about, um, talk a little bit about the trends and content consumption. So things move very fast online, um, and TikTok communities especially know this. So I'm going to just ask you these quick questions. So do you utilize trends uh, that are popular, like uh, trending sounds or trends, trending content? Garbo, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm a huge consumer of TikTok. I am the demographic. I'm a Gen Z, so I'm people that people are targeting towards most of the time. So when I'm scrolling, I consume lots of, you know, content. And what I pull that are trending is not usually what is trending the way that people are using it, because you don't want to become a part of the trend. You kind of want to make the trend your own. So let's say we, there's a trend about, it's probably a little bit niche, turning food item into tic tac toes. I don't know if you guys have seen that. That's on my part of the internet. That's what I see. So from that trend, we thought, how can we turn it into our trend? I mean, we make ceramics. So we actually got a brand deal with Chips Ahoy. So we turned their chips into ceramic chips. And then from those, um, we have different flavors of them and we turn them into tic-tac-toe. So that's how we play in with trends. But things about like audios and filters that are a little bit harder to do because ceramic is a really long process. So by the time the trend it's over the piece is pretty much you know it takes two weeks to produce so but the good thing about having a small business is that we don't have to wait for levels of approval from different levels of corporate stuff the business talks over here so we don't have to wait two weeks or three weeks to get approval to use i don't know like a barbie um trend we can just do it right now i can do it while i'm in my car do a little fun tiktok video that might blow up to get a million view i don't really know why but that's the magic of tiktok so yeah we play around with trends a lot here how about you caitlin and ross we actually don't rely too much on trends and uh, trending sounds. When I first started on TikTok back in the end of 2020, I was relying solely on trends. Um, I'd seen other small businesses that went viral and claimed it blew up their business and, you know, it did really well. So I thought, OK, that would be great for us. I want that to happen to us. So I, I hopped on every trend I could and every trending sound and it just didn't work. I wasn't getting that connection. I wasn't growing. We weren't making sales. 
skills. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to start teaching people how to make coffee. I'm going to make content that's authentic to me, that's in my ballpark, that I know how to do. And as soon as I made that switch and focused on providing value instead of just trying to go viral, uh, when everything changed and we grew that audience. Yeah, I think that's important. What Garbo said is um, all of us are intimately aware of trends because of our activity on social media. We see it way before most corporate worlds, people in the corporate world see it because we're interacting with people on a daily basis. And Caitlin has over a million followers on TikTok and 1.6 million followers around the world on other social media platforms. We kind of know what's going on. Um, often much quicker than others. And um, we don't want to be part of those trends, but we want to be aware of them. Because you can't ride the trend, because when the trend's over, you're over. But you just have to be aware of what's happening on social media. Trends, consumer trends are changing more rapidly. As I said, I'm vintage, but I've been in the marketing communications world for a very long time. And it used to be that you could predict trends and that, but now you can't. The consumer behavior changes so rapidly and you don't want to be part of that trend because when it changes, you're gone too. So yeah, we, we are on the front lines. We see what's going on. Um, we're more aware of consumer behavior than a lot of big corporations are because we have to be. Yeah. Trends are everywhere. Corporations, new businesses, small, medium businesses, you don't have to jump on the trend uh, ship. You can do your own thing and just be authentic as yourself. And Cheekbone Beauty does this so well. Jen, tell us a little bit about your how, how you manage trends. How do you uh, stay away from trends? Do you feel that pressure to engage in them? So this is for me, I don't, I'm like such a nerd with wanting to actually like as much I don't like putting makeup on myself on TikTok or on social media. I do really have fun with like a lot of the sounds and music. And so the team now knows like if it's a Taylor Swift trend, they'll be like, Jen would want us to do this. Let's just do it. Right. And so those things do happen. Um, and certain sound, like I think things are funny. I'm cons like, I am in bed and just consuming TikTok content all night until I pass out. <laughs> and like, I can't believe that that's my life, but yes, it is. Um, um, and I'll find things and I think they're hilarious. And then in the morning, you know, my team's getting all these delayed delivery messages of all the TikToks I saw that, yeah, let's do this, let's do that. So there's so many things that we want to do, but of course we can't do it all. Um, but I think they're fun. I think it makes this that part of the role for us more exciting. But of course, like staying in our lane and then focusing on those things that we know that are important to us as a brand, but we add them in there for like little pockets of fun. I love that. So when, you, when you're talking about trends and you're, you're thinking about new things to do, your community is obviously hungry for new things. How do you um, present your material with a, a new perspective with each video? Because it's day to day. Sometimes people are posting three, four, five times a day. How do you do that so well to build your brands on TikTok? Jen, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely, it's like a huge it's a huge process and it's a big calendar that we keep trying to do that. Um, I would, and I'm the probably the worst cause I'm like telling them like more content. <laughs> it's like, I feel like this big bad CEO yelling at them more content constantly, make more content. And they're like all scared. No, they're not really, that's not how it works. <laughs> but um, yeah, we want more because I know that that's what's gonna get eyeballs on our brand. And for us as a small business, it's. Con about constant brand awareness like gratefully in, in Canada we're really well known but when you know I was in, in San Francisco at a conference last week and some you enter some spaces and I'm like wow we have so much work to do in in obviously in the south in the U.S. so it's just this constant um, wheel of content and what we do. I think we take turns now. We have three people in in this in our marketing team, me and two others, and. You can tell like if some if I was getting tired, then someone else sort of their excitement jumps in and it kind of like we give each other shifts, I guess, of who's gonna, you know, take the time to get 
in that creative space to think about what we're going to do next. And then, of course, we're always we want it to relate to the brand and our stories and what we're doing. And so, yeah, that does take time and planning for it. Um, as much as in the early days when it when it was just me doing stuff, it would be more flash in the pan. Like I'm going to throw this up and see if it works. But as we've grown as a business and and what we've seen change and transition is when we're working with these large retail partners that are obsessed with TikTok as well. Um, and their major marketing teams are like um, wanting your team to have more TikTok content about, you know, us doing visits at JCPenney or Sephora. They like want that. And so um, we do have to be really strategic about how we're building it out. But again, cycle it, right? Take turns, rest. How about you, Caitlin? I think the the big thing for us to help mix it up is doing those live streams. Um, it changes every day. I've made coffee with the AeroPress or a pour over hundreds of times going live, but I still get thousands of people coming to watch me make coffee, uh, even though it's the exact same thing that I've done many times before. So just giving that inside fresh perspective, being something consistent that people can rely on. They know that if they go live on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, I'm probably going to be live making coffee. And so people come every Monday. And, and now when I don't go live, they get mad at me. They're like, why weren't you live? What's Where were you? I was waiting for you. Yes. So just having that consistent relationship with people. Um, and then I've, I've started doing more behind the scenes stuff, daily vlogs, and just really trying to peel back um, what people see online. There's so many people that make coffee content. Uh, you know, we all have different competitors in our niche. Um, and yeah, it's coffee. We're going to say the same thing to a certain extent, but it's also your personality that people fall in love with more so than just the content that you make. So I've really been focusing on trying to uh, go into that and show people more than just coffee stuff. I think um, to sit here and say we're TikTok experts is just not, we're still learning how to maximize uh, the platform. We tried something earlier this year where Caitlin would actually go live from the counter in our mobile trailer and engage audiences all over the world as we serve coffee. Um, the, the people buying the coffee are not on screen, except that we hear people all the time who came because they saw Caitlin live. They live in Toronto. You know, people would drive from Richmond Hill to get a coffee because Caitlin was identifying where we are. But the audiences that come in are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people while we're live on that trailer for four or five hours. And we got into the idea of having a contest when we hit a certain number of likes on TikTok while Caitlin is live, we give away a free copy. And they actually, the followers on TikTok monitor, you just hit 200,000, you haven't given away a copy yet. So um, we set those um, parameters and it, it engages audiences. So we're still learning. But I don't, what was your largest audience on, from the trailer? It was. Yeah, our largest live stream on a Sunday pop-up was 500,000 people. Uh, and we had 2.5 million likes come through. So I gave away a decent amount of free coffee that yeah. day. But yeah. it There's was a lot yeah, of free coffee fun. going out it that day. It just gives people that opportunity to, to still feel uh, involved and connected with us, even though they're in the UK or Australia. So, yeah. And the fun thing is that they monitor us yeah. on TikTok going, you just gave away, you know, you just hit four. 400,000. Where's that free coffee? So. Holding you accountable. Accountable, yeah. <laughs> Consistency is key when you're posting on TikTok. Learn from these creators here who are coming to the, the, the platform every single day and appealing to those audience members who are just waiting, waiting for them, right? Garbo, tell us a little bit about uh, different perspectives in your content. So I'm very fortunate to have a really nice team in Montreal. So their job is to make the pieces and my job is to make content because that's what I like to do now. And then it's also great to pass the baton to someone that is also interested in learning the craft of making a piece by hand. So there are different categories of posts that we do. I just thought about it. I didn't plan this at all. So um, number one is that we create posts for the products. So that intertwine with other videos like behind the scenes, like vlogging videos 
videos that people also really like and also more like trendy videos that I post on the spot just for fun and the last category is more like unhinged content that sometimes I'm like I want to make a stool and then I would just make a stool and people love that or like I want to make a mountain and I just make a mountain and then people also love that as well I think that's why people love TikTok because sometimes it's so you don't need to be professional people expect you to go do something unexpected so we use that platform a lot to experiment with different techniques that we're trying to experiment with like we bought new clay and let's see what we can do with this new clay we got a gigantic kiln let's see how much clay we can fit into this kiln so it's those a mixed match of different content and also it helps that we are a team that of people that genuinely enjoy creating pottery not nobody is forced to work for me of course hopefully so for them they will always give me new ideas they're like oh what if we make a bee mug and we're like okay let's make this bee mug happen and then our people also really love it or they can be like oh what if we we have a signature mug that's the bow mug and it's halloween coming up so they're like what if we buy a bunch of stencil that has bats on it and then we just stick it on the bow it doesn't make any sense but the audience also really like it so a lot of the time it's just brainstorming within a really small team and that's how new content happen I like that. Welcoming people into your business so that they can be a part of it, be a part of the growth. I think at Indigenous Box, we relied very heavily on our audience to, to be champions of us. You know, we created Indigenous Box to champion other Indigenous businesses. And in turn, when you give, uh, when you give, all of that comes back to you in different forms. You know, people would do unboxings and they would be a champion of what you're doing and how did, you know, how did, how do they say your name in these rooms of opportunities? And they will. Um, we're going to sh switch gears a little bit. I think we've got a few minutes left. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about business and uh, protecting ourselves online. As content creators, we share so much of ourselves online and so much of that is being our authentic selves. So Jen, this question is for you. So as, as small business owners, we need to remain focused on being authentically ourselves and along with that, protecting our IP. So I'd like to pose this question and I think, I think that maybe you can speak to it. How do you protect yourself and your business um, and your trade secrets, but also share and bring people into that space? Yeah, so we are working on a really cool innovation project right now that IRAP helped us fund, um, and it's called the Niagara Project. So again, headquartered in St. Catharines, the Niagara region is Canada's largest wine region. We're using waste from uh, the grape uh, industry, and so the stems, skins, and seeds, and extracting actives that we can put in a future project. And so we're really open about talking about it, um, but we're also careful at the same time. But the reason we're doing this is one in particular in the beauty space and the food space. Um, your ingredients lists go on your box so any decent chemist can reverse engineer your formulation and literally copy it and and that happens quite a bit and actually in the beauty space most people don't make their own formulations they're working with white labeler or private labeler cosmetic companies anyway and so they're all the same formulations and i thought what is going to make us stand out and be completely different as a brand and for us it was focusing on innovation and then for us creating um intellectual property on an actual ingredient ingredient that Cheekbone Beauty will own that will only go in our future products that no one can copy or possibly make different extensions of that that we could sell off as another stream of revenue. But so those are ways that we work on innovation to set ourselves apart, protect it by being just very careful um, and also talking about it so that people have known how long we've been talking about it for um, the, that we would have done that in the past. And then I think personally, there is a lot of like attacks and, and sort of things that can happen online. And I really just don't read anything I used to once. And I think um, I stopped. Yeah, because that can be traumatically painful. A cucum, a cucum is a grandmother and I'm not even close to being a grandmother. And so somebody called me that name on TikTok one day and I was like, cucums are loaded with wisdom. I will take that insult. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we only had a few minutes left and I, I know that there's a lot of folks in the room here that are trying to figure out well, how can I help and how can I support these small businesses. So we're going to start over with, with you, Garbo. Tell the room how they can support uh, Grumpy Kid Studios. Well, follow us at Grumpy Kid Studio on TikTok and all the other platforms. And also ask us questions. Ask small business how to run, uh, in, 
how to run a social media account that can attract your audience. Caitlin Ross. Um, yeah, for us, we do have that in-person opportunity. We have three weeks left. We run till the end of October. Um, so come see us at our coffee trailer here in Toronto. Uh, you also order online. We do free delivery in the GTA. So if you order two or more bags, we'll bring coffee to your house. Um, so those are great opportunities to support us. And I'm just going to say it, just buy our stuff, right? <laughs> like yeah. buy our stuff, buy them as gifts. We Sweetgrass is our best-selling lip gloss, by the way. Um, and it's great to give as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, you he heard it here first. So connect with these uh, makers. They're going to be available afterwards. If you have any questions about their brands or about their TikTok strategies, you're not going to want to pass up this opportunity to connect with these makers because they're pretty incredible and they're really highly sought after. So take the opportunity. Um, so lastly, we have a minute left or so in true tiktok fashion i thought maybe we can film a tiktok together yeah everybody okay with that <laughs> i wanted to show you just how the dance they were supposed to learn. <laughs> yeah did you guys learn the choreography in the, in the no nobody <laughs> Well, I wanted to show you how easy it is to get on TikTok for corporations, for organizations, not for profits, governments. This is your chance to see, you know, how easy it is just to film a quick TikTok and tell people about what you're doing. So we are actually on my TikTok page right now. Say hi. There we go. And I'm going to pass it over to you guys. So say hi. <laughs> All right, that is pretty much it for us today. I do want to thank these uh, TikTok creators and our friends over at TikTok Canada. A special thank you to the Toronto Global Forum for creating this space for us and allowing us to tell a little bit about what we do in our businesses. So thank you very much for, for today and we look forward to chatting with you again soon.